Nearly one in five adults in the United States experience a mental health condition each year, and mood disorders are the most prevalent, affecting 21 million Americans. But the good news is that mood disorders are very treatable when people have access to support and quality mental health care. I'm Stephen Brown, and on today's edition of Weekend Connection, we'll talk about an organization which leads the way through education, wellness options, and peer support. So, let's get connected. My guest today is Phyllis Foxworth, Advocacy Vice President of the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, the world's largest peer support organization for people living with depression and bipolar disorder. Phyllis, in reading about the organization and its history, I was struck by DBSA's unique distinction that was founded by and has always been operated by individuals living with depression or bipolar disorder. You know, that tells me that not only can you talk about depression, but many in DBSA have actually lived it and survived it. Uh, can you tell us more about your organization's charter? Sure. Um, first off, thanks, Stephen, for having me on your program today and the opportunity to share with your listeners just a little bit about the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. DBSA was founded over 30 years ago on the ideas of peers supporting peers living with mood disorders. In many cities around the country, groups of people had come together to offer mutual support at informal meetings. Um, I always find it amazing that long before the internet and social media, these pockets of support groups discovered each other. Um, And then about over 30 years ago, they agreed to meet in Chicago. So out of those humble beginnings, um, DBSA has grown to a network of over 250 chapters across the country offering over 600 support group meetings. Mm -hmm. But let me just share with you, DBSA is much more than support groups. We believe that people living with mood disorders can and do lead quality productive lives. So we support this mission by offering programs that provide hope, education, and advocacy to improve people's lives so that they can achieve their own personal wellness goals. Phyllis, I was struck when I read that the World Health Organization estimates that by 2030, depression will be the leading cause of disability worldwide. Just how prevalent is depression among our population? Well, Stephen, I think that people would be surprised that um, mental health conditions are much more prevalent than people recognize. Nearly one in five adults in the United States will experience a mental health condition each year. And the other interesting thing is that mood disorders, that being depression and bipolar disorder, are the most prevalent. Almost 7% of the population lives with depression, which is already the number one leading cause of disability in the United States. And almost 3% of the population live with bipolar disorder. But there is good news. The good news is that mood disorders are very treatable Mm. when people have access to support and quality mental health care. We're talking with Phyllis Foxworth on Weekend Connection today. She is Advocacy Vice President for the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. Now, Phyllis, there's a stigma attached to this whole topic of mental health or stability with the vast majority of media stories on mental illness focusing on negative characteristics. Are Americans hesitant to interact with people who have a mental illness? That's a good question, Stephen. You know, as I just mentioned earlier, mood disorders are very treatable. But often the very symptoms that lead to isolation can exasperate the condition, and this leads to a vicious cycle of hopelessness. That's why I feel it's so important to change the conversation around mental health to a positive one. Um, I want to just give you an example of a program that we have here at DBSA. It's called I'm Here, and it's offered um, by DBSA to attempt to do just what I said, have a positive conversation around mental health. We offer these workshops in local communities, um, but the point is that it places mental health in a positive light Mm -hmm and provides a toolkit to help people initiate a conversation around mental health with a friend or a loved one. So we start this workshop with a conversation starter aid 
that could be used by a peer or a person living with a mood disorder or um, a family or friend who is concerned about a loved one. So regardless of who initiates the conversation, it works like this. The conversation initiator has a toolkit with two safety pins and green beads. This kit then provides an activity where working together, each person in the conversation strings green beads onto the safety pin. So when they're making that safety pin together, it bridges the awkwardness of starting a mental health conversation ah. between those two people. Mm -hmm. And then when it's completed, each person now has a safety pin to wear. They can put it on their coat, their purse, but it's something that they can wear to demonstrate that they are both here for each other. And even more important, it creates awareness in the larger community that they are here and can be approached to engage in a positive conversation around mental health. So we see this program. I mean, a good place where this program could be used would be on a college campus, for example, where um, people worked on this program at a dorm or in um, a sorority or fraternity. And in that campus, people were wearing those green beads and people, other people who might be living with um, depression or bipolar disorder and I don't know who to reach out to, they see people wearing that green pin, and they know that that's a safe person mm -hmm. that they can talk to. This is Weekend Connection on BBN, and we're talking with Phyllis Foxworth, Advocacy Vice President for the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. DBSA is the leading patient-directed national organization focusing on the most prevalent mental illnesses, depression, and bipolar disorder. Now, with so many people living with a diagnosed and or treatable mental illness. Phyllis, you would think that the mental health community of doctors are on top of this situation and that there are plenty of professionals available everywhere. But is this true, Phyllis? Stephen, you would think so. But unfortunately, 23% of Americans do not have access to appropriate and timely mental health care. Now, there's a variety of reasons for this. Um, first, um, almost 60% of psychiatrists are age 55 or older. And fewer medical students are choosing psychiatry as a specialty. Mm -hmm. But another factor is the lack of psychiatrists as part of the commercial insurance plan's network of doctors. DBSA recently conducted a survey in several states to better understand this role of that inadequate networks have on the ability to obtain care. So this was just an unscientific survey. There's no, there's no um, official research here, mm -hmm. but we learned some very interesting things. It takes on average six to nine weeks to schedule that first appointment mm. for those people who were responded to the survey. We also learned that 39% gave up and never scheduled an appointment. Now I want to be, make it very clear, that's not to say they didn't receive care. Mm -hmm. um, when we asked what they did if they were unable to make that initial appointment, they shared that they attended support group meetings, sought out information online, read self-help books, and developed personal coping skills to manage symptoms. So you can see, Stephen, the work the EBS State does serves a big need in the community to fill that gap. We're speaking with Phyllis Foxworth, Advocacy Vice President of the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. DBSA supports research to develop more effective and tolerable treatments and discover a cure. Now, Phyllis, what has led to the rise in the diagnosis of bipolar disorder in children under the age of 18? And are these kids being able to stay in school, or are our schools even able to handle the problem? Well, you know, there has been some research that has been done on that topic, Stephen, and there's much debate around that literature. But it does demonstrate that a rise in diagnosis of, of bipolar disorder in children. So again, because DBSA is neither a clinical or a research organization, I'll leave that debate to the experts on whether or not mm. that's true. Sure. But what is not debatable is that more than 50% of students age 14 and over, with a mental health condition, drop out of high school. Even worse, 70% of youth in the criminal justice system have at least one mental health condition. So you can see, left untreated, 
a mental health condition can become a barrier to a successful transition to adulthood. Right, right. In fact, high school dropout costs the U.S. economy $1.8 billion a year. So just, you know, investing in childhood mental health is not only good for the children and the families that we serve, it's good for the entire country. Now, Phyllis, is there a relationship between bipolar disorder and substance abuse? And what is the human cost both in dollars and lives? You know, Stephen, earlier we discussed the challenges many people face in accessing quality mental health care. For many people, lack of access to a correct diagnosis and an inappropriate medication therapy can lead to a regimen of self-medicating through other substances. People living with bipolar disorder have the highest rate of substance abuse among all mental health conditions. So, you know, right now the country is very focused on finding solutions to the opioid use crisis, right. as we very well should be. But I'm concerned that public policy decision makers are only working on a partial solution. So while it's true that the first point of triage is to assist individuals in managing the addiction to the opioid, if we end there and don't provide treatment for a possible underlying mood disorder, we do a huge disservice to that individual. You know, without appropriate treatment for the mood disorder, the risk that the individual will eventually turn, return back to self-medicating increases significantly. And so then that person enters an unnecessary cycle of treatment for substance use disorder that could have been eliminated if we had only provided the additional treatment for the mood disorder at the first time. This is Weekend Connection on the Bible Broadcasting Network, and we're talking with Phyllis Foxworth, the Advocacy Vice President for the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. DBSA is the leading patient-directed national organization focusing on the most prevalent mental illnesses, depression, and bipolar disorder. Now, Phyllis, I understand that there are personalized tools available 24-7. Uh, tell us about this. Sure, happy to. Among DBSA core beliefs is recognizing that there are many paths to wellness. Peer support and a personal wellness toolkit are just two of those. So it was very important for DBSA to support people by providing readily accessible wellness tools. So the result of that initiative was the Facing Us website. This site has a resource page that provides education about depression and bipolar disorder, as well as information on living a healthy lifestyle. Other pages on the site provide the opportunity for someone to create a secure, password-protected personal online wellness tracker. So this tool allows people to track their mood daily, develop their own healthy living plan around eating and sleep patterns, and includes reminders on things such as medications and doctor's appointments. For those who like to write, the site contains tips on journaling and a site where you can write your entries online and even include artwork to personalize your journal. This journal is password protected and can only be seen by the person who's creating it. So if writing's not your thing, there's a creative page. And this page provides links to podcasts, workshops, and online courses that can help people learn how to use their own creativity as a wellness tool. So it's important to recognize that everyone's journey through wellness is unique to them. And we want to recognize and celebrate that by providing people with tools that speak to them and giving them as many ways to um, find their own personal wellness journey as possible. And Phyllis, tell us uh, what that website is. That site can be found at dbsalliance.org. And there people will find a wealth of information. Again, we've been talking to Phyllis Hawksworth, Advocacy Vice President for the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. Thank you again, Phyllis, for joining us today on Weekend Connection. Oh, thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you for listening to this feature, a production of BBN, the Bible Broadcasting Network. BBN provides 24-hour Christian programming, great Christian music and Bible teaching. Listen to BBN by clicking the link in the description.